Every other area of the key two we've looked at thus far has been mediocre at worst. Unfortunately, I have to report that the camera is the least performing area so far. What's new with the Key 2 is dual 12 megapixel camera sensors on the rear. One features an f1.8 aperture, while the 2x telephoto sensor features an f2.6 aperture. There's no optical image stabilization, so it's far too easy to capture shaky, poorly detailed images. In well-lit environments, colors were good and detail was better, but anything outside of ideal conditions you'll notice shots become dim and more noisy than similar shots captured via phones that cost less than this handset. Some of my photos turned out to be super faded and smudgy, others had intolerable lens flares. Sometimes I feel like JJ Abrams designed this camera. So it goes without saying that low light performance isn't up to par. You can expect a fair amount of noise. I also found it difficult to focus on a subject in poor lighting conditions. It does have some useful software features like a portrait mode that actually does a pretty good job detecting what does and doesn't need to be blurred out. There's also a manual mode where you can tweak white balance, ISO, etc. This is really great to see and have. You're going to want to use the manual settings to tweak the white balance because it can be hit or miss in the auto mode. Other standard features include a barcode scanner and a panorama mode. The Key 2 does support 4K video footage up to 30 frames per second, but with no optical image stabilization, footage can be rather shaky. Videos tend to be too high in contrast with poor dynamic range. Noise can be expected in dark areas as well. What is nice to see is various resolutions. For example, there's 4K support in both 30 and 24 frames per second, and 1080p resolutions at up to 60 frames per second. The 8 megapixel selfie camera has a nice wide angle, which I absolutely love. It was one of the first things I noticed, but detail is rather poor and noise is prevalent. This front facing camera will get you by, but it's really not very good and is certainly not up to par with handsets in this price category. Overall, the camera performance should suffice, but for $650, it should be much better. We'll be sure to include mention of an update that fixes any of these issues in our final review at the end of this challenge. With that said, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.